I, I, I did. I bought snacks to this pod. Maddie, did you bring snacks to this pod? I ate mine already. Just, just beers, liquid diet. Yeah, good. It's a uh, one of those ones. I've had some wins in the NBA this week in fantasy. Cheers to you. This is, of course, the crossover. It's a tale of two Maddies each and every Sunday or Monday to set you up for weeks. Well, look, let's just get to it. Let's just not mince around. Let's go on a trip to Paris this week because I hear it's really nice this time of year. Why not? Welcome to the ultimate super coach and fantasy sports show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Yeah, yes, indeed you are. And Matty, as I said, it's a bit of a shit week for two teams, but the rest of them, should we do the schedule first, just, you know, for difference or? Yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's look at the schedule uh, brought yeah. here today by uh, Bonus Bank. Yeah, thanks to uh, our good friends, Bonus Bank. Bonus Bank is one of Australia's best side hustles. If you do love your punt, make sure you use these guys to take advantage of all the multi-bets, the parlays in America. If you are American, you can still subscribe and get involved with it. 25% off your first month subscription, and it's less than $1.90 a day. So if you buy coffee each day, but you actually want to get free money back in your bank, well, it makes sense to use Bonus Bank. They're a good, proud sponsor of the Insight Podcast Network and the Insight NBA Show. Get them out and use promo code INSIGHT. Matty. Take us through the schedule. What? How many gay, game, gays, or gays or games on which we, we don't judge here? But how many games on which days have we got this week? Mate, it's a real, um, it's a, it's a heavy week. Um, there's six yeah. on Monday, five on Tuesday, ten on Wednesday, uh, five on Thursday, ten on Friday, and then just eight and five on the Sunday, on Saturday and Sunday on the weekend heading in. So, um, yeah, look, you nearly. You're not really going to be looking at picking up too many guys off the waiver wire to win you your week. Of course, yeah, I just think on those heavy days, the guys that are playing four games that you pick up the waiver yeah. wire, they're probably not going to play, are they? No, they're not. And it's those games on like the Wednesday and the Friday that kind of stuff you up a little bit when you're trying to plan it out. So the key there is not to over plan. I think it's kind of a really fun week to go daily, Maddie. Like I don't say that much because I like to make the most of it. But the way that it breaks this week, and I've – I've fucked myself six ways to Sunday, to be honest. In I'm screwed in one league. I own Donovan Mitchell, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Thompson, uh, sorry, Cam Johnson, and Nick and, and and Clacko. So I've got four guys who play one game, and none of those dudes are. I've been preparing for this week all fantasy season, and now it's going to come and hit me in the face because they play one I game. You you want to know what? If if you're a listener and you're writing in, my advice would be. Take the week off. Take just that's just take the week off. Like there's I'm not check- there's nothing you can do this week. I, I have my net stack. Uh, this is I wanted to do a stack at the beginning of the year, and these guys fell into my lap. So I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to give it a crack. I like my nets. I like all these guys. I like the I like, you know me. I've been a big fan of Nick Claxton since the 2K days, and I put all my badges, you know, in my team. I just put everything on Nick Claxton in our what is it my league. Everything went on Nick Claxton. I think I had the guy with a three-point shot by the end of the day. I just, I just put all my stats attributes on that guy. But it really is going to cook me. So I'm taking the week off in one league. But the rest of them, mate, tell us how we can win our league. What back-to-backs have we got? Uh, what back-to-backs have we got? And apart from that one, the only other, by the way, Matty, red flag on Philadelphia, two games. I see pros and cons for that. I'll talk about that at the end. But take us through who's got four and who's got three. Yeah, righto. So we've got Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, Houston, Indiana, LAC, Miami, Milwaukee, Minnesota, OKC, Portland, Sacramento, and Utah with the four games this week you can target. Um, Head us into our uh, three games, Matty. Yeah, mate, our three-game guys here are Atlanta, Dallas, the Nuggets, the Pistons, the Warriors, the Lakers, the Grizzlies. Proud Jersey, you're repping there tonight there, Matty. Uh, the Pelicans, the Knickerbockers, the Magic, the Suns, the Spurs, Toronto, and Washington. And as I said, there's good news and bad news for Philadelphia. Philadelphia has been a little bit smashed by a little bit smashed by injuries lately. We did have the uh, the crippling kind of one to Joel and I'm not I want to say crippling to it, but Joel and B kind of it was a little bit of an injury there for it. So his knee is playing up again. DeAnthony Melton was out for his I think second game. Tobias Harris sat out. Now these guys were two games. Maybe we don't see him rush back necessarily. 
Maybe we only see them play one game of action this week to give them more time to heal. So we just want to watch those injury reports. But, I mean, I've got Melton stashed in IR in one league because that's what's going to happen this week. They're going to move into IR. You can probably make the most of that for some streams elsewhere, Maddie. You know what? I just dropped Melton in a league. So that's that's interesting. I just thought Jalen Suggs was sitting there. Melton yep. hasn't impressed me when he's played, um, and it's a and it's a fourteen team comp, and I didn't expect Jalen Suggs to be there, so I went looking there, and I was like, "Hey, let's just let Melton go." Um, yep. Look, if I if I get the opportunity to pick him back up again, I will. But you will, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm okay with not. I'm okay with losing him for Jalen Suggs this week. Yeah, I look. I'm a big D'Anthony. I dropped D'Anthony Melton. So I picked up De'Anthony Melton and I dropped Kobe White when Kobe White was playing shit, to be fair, to begin the season. And we all know this is – I said this to you on a pod today, and we should probably give a bit of a shout-out to Mick Dell. We did a halftime report show today, which is a lot of fun. That'll be dropping, I guess, Monday afternoon. So make sure you like and subscribe to all things Insight Podcast Network and Insight Fantasy Sports and check out the halftime report with uh, Matrix, myself, and Big Mick Dell. Uh, shout-out to him as well for, for his time this afternoon and a bit on of these ones. Because that was a lot of fun. But I said, like, it's the my curse of Kobe White. I'm forever, like, picking this guy up and dropping him. And when I have him, he'll, he'll be all right. He'll do the Kobe White thing for a game. And then he'll suck for three. And then I'll drop him. Other guys are there. Overall on the season, De'Anthony Melton in NICAD has been worth about top 70 value. And I'm okay with that. So this is a guy we're looking at top 70 value. So I never wanted to drop a guy. But when DeAnthony Melton was there and what he offers me by way of, you know, his the only thing is his field goal percentage this year has been really shit house. It's been 397. It's been sub 400. And he just hasn't had it going. The, the threes per game, the points are there. But if that could creep back up, this guy is a dude who could skyrocket into top 45 value. But sub 400 for a guard, Matty, just doesn't cut the mustard for me. No, it doesn't. And, like, if he's scoring a lot, like, you're going to cop sub 400 from a – Trey Young. You know what? I'll probably uh, cop sub 400 from Jalen Suggs in this one because he can yeah. light it up and score 30. De'Anthony Melton doesn't do that. So, And with the magic so depleted, this one, it's a, it's a huge one for that one. We've got – look, the interesting thing here is, well, there's 10 teams that actually finished this week with some form of back-to-back set. Now, obviously, with the, the Saturday and Sunday, is kind of fantasy-friendly. Eight games are okay. It's hard on the Wednesday and the Friday with 10. But of these 10 teams that finish their back, nine teams that finish their uh, back on the uh, Friday and Saturday are Atlanta, Chicago, Golden State, the Houston Rockets, the Memphis Grizzlies, the Pelicans, the Orlando Magic, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Utah Jazz. They're playing on Friday and Saturday, whereas the Mizuoki Bucks are playing on Saturday and Sunday. And obviously with eight games Saturday and Sunday five games, you're probably going to Get your uh, get your hands on someone like a Malik Beasley, a Bobby Portis in there, campaign. You're looking for those kind of targets possibly to finish up your week. Yeah, I don't know about campaign, but um, Malik Beasley is serviceable, absolutely dropped and picked up, uh, yeah, more times than a dirty taco. <laughs> And that's just a messy experience. And I don't even think you're talking about tacos, to be fair, but I, I do know exactly what you were saying on that I one. Yeah, the Milwaukee. I was like, what kind of taco are we talking that gets that messy? That's definitely like some kind of pulled pull pork. Yeah, like a pulled pork. And like in the soft ones, I do find, you know, the hard ones with the mints do <laughs> get quite messy. But I think I've perfected the way that the way that I hold it. Like even when it cracks in the center. No, when it cracks in the center, you've got to turn it sideways and eat it like a sandwich. Um, so like that it doesn't it like, fall. Side, like Yeah, yeah. So if you crack the bottom of the hard one as you're eating it, you've got to flip it sideways. So then you eat it. So then you've got a crisp on the bottom so that it doesn't all spill out. Can I also just say this? There was no such bullshit as soft tacos until like 2010. Like, I don't know when, yeah. whenever this Tex-Mex thing took off. I grew up, like, we, we grew up here in Australia. You, had, you, It was like you grew up hard. You, you, you got punched in the face as a kid, drink your concrete, you know, toughen up, you know, hard up, you little yeah. bitch. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. We had one kind of taco, and it was the the old, old El Paso yellow bloody tacos they came in yeah. and just you would eat them. Your, your parents would shove them in the oven for five minutes before you ate your taco. And there was only one type of taco. It was a mince taco. That is the yeah. only taco I knew that I existed until 2010. And then all of a sudden yeah, I'm eating this nothing. 
There was nothing else. You know what? You know what? I'm happy for the fajita though. Um, like oh, now that now that the fajita's in the thing. Oh, you know, I've never been to a Taco Bell. There you go. Have you never been to a Taco Bell? I've never been to a Taco oh. Bell. My first. This is crazy. My first Taco Bell was actually in Spain. The first time I went to the states, I didn't go to a Taco Bell. I was in Spain with my wife, and we went down. We were in Madrid. And there was a Taco Bell and she loves margaritas. Like my wife's favorite drink is a margarita. It's just bliss for her. She's like, is that margarita? I'm like, yeah, it is. And it was a Taco Bell. So my first Taco Bell was for alcohol and the churros were pretty bloody decent as well. But but now oh, also just low key, quesadillas are the real hero of Mexican food. Like shout out to quesadillas. That, that's where I'm at with this one. Uh, we've got back to back streaming through the week. And if you don't like our taco advice, by the way, we will stuff you because tacos are brilliant and we love mexican food monday and tuesday there is none to start off your week so you can start planning on individual day streams tuesday wednesday detroit uh, minnesota sacramento toronto wednesday and thursday you've got boston and okc maddie we've only got one there on thursday and friday mate yeah it's only portland there and then um yeah it's the fridays and saturdays that I think that you could actually make a move on if you wanted if you find somebody a bit saucy there um as I did with Jalen, with I feel with Suggs this week. Um, but you've yep. got Atlanta, Chicago, Warriors, Houston, Memphis, New Orleans, Orlando, Spurs, and the Jazz. And I don't mean to pinpoint anything this early in the podcast, but maybe Ooh. a Draymond Green or somebody like that if it was dropped in some in some shallower yep. leagues. Um, and he hasn't been stashed. Like the Warriors are coming up to a back to back. You know, just remember he's hasn't been out because he's been injured. He's been out because he's a shit bloke. So, um, yeah, there's the opportunity for him to play well in a back-to-back. And I think, like, a lot of puffs going to come out of those blokes like Trace Jackson Davis um, and yep. Draymond Green's just going to go back to his normal minutes and try and make it back up to his teammates. And this is and this is what he does when he's back out in the field. And, you know, obviously they've gone through some things in the Golden State Warriors. There's trades on the horizon possibly for this team as well. In every press conference I've seen of Steve Kerr, you can kind of just read his body language. He's doing one of like if I'm if I'm doing this pod right now, legit, and I'm just doing it like sitting back like this, like pained at every like just like any question, Maddie. Like, do you like tacos? Yeah, like the hard ones. Like, it's fine. The guy literally looks tired, pained, and slumped over. Like he's defeated by everything that's gone on this last week. So I feel I feel for Steve Kerr. He was one of the nicest bloody blokes in the world after that. Not. For my 40th birthday, we were down at that basketball game at the Marvel Stadium here in, in Melbourne. So at the end of the 40th, uh, at the end of it, he was coaching Team USA. And I think it was Jeff, the one with the glasses, Jeff Van Gundy. I've got it. He, yep. he, uh, we were sitting right behind the benches of the American and the Australian teams. Like we had brilliant seats. At the end of the game, all, they were all standing around kind of getting out of there. The Team USA just lost to the Boomers, which was just just brilliant to be in a massive stadium for that. I walked up there and I was like, hey, guys, and the guys came up. He's like, and Jeff Van Gundy is like, want a towel? You wiped it with us. Literally mm. threw me a Gatorade towel. And I just felt like a little pop star. Like, oh, my God, Jeff, yeah. give me the towel. So I got, this, I got this towel. And Steve Kerr was like, you like the towel? And I'm like, I don't like the towel. He's like, man, have a good one. And guy shook my hand. Like, for no reason at all, just after a loss. And from then, I'm like, you're a nice bloke, Steve Kerr. <laughs> and that was, the that was for me, like, the coolest – I think that was probably the coolest basketball moment of my entire life. It's like, yeah, have a good one. Just shook my hand. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Steve, thank you. I could probably hit a three – I could probably shoot better for, like, for the next five minutes, but that was just me. <laughs> um, mate, we've got – um. I was going to say, the Golden State Warriors, how are you feeling towards their uh, championship aspirations these days? Well, um, while you were talking, I actually did a live trade in in one of our leagues um, because um, oh, I noticed which... I was trying to I was trying to think about who would take it because oh, Chris Paul's it. injured. We're going to go to the injury Chris, report, yep. and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I was just thinking, and we're in a shallow league that only goes one hundred and twenty deep. And oh, this Pod, is your league, yeah, yeah, and the Molten League, and Pod Molten League um, yeah. was actually not rostered. So I thought, look, let's oh. get Pod in. I was streaming in um, Trey Jones, and mm. yeah, look, let's just see how that goes. So, thank um, you because Todd is probably the biggest ben- beneficiary from Chris Paul being out. I absolutely agree with you there, and I actually like that. I actually managed to pick up. I managed to stream. That is a really fun league. I managed to stream in Dante DiVincenzo today. Like it's a shallow league, and guys burn through dudes left, right, and center on this one. So, 
yeah, I'm I'm really excited for that week in this league because it's been it's been going well. It's actually one of my favorite leagues, to be fair. And I've been I went I've got shout out to our guy Damo as well. I've gone up eight one on him this week, but it's been tight. Like every single week is absolutely like yeah, it's absolutely bonkers how good it is. Talking about that league, mate, you had a bit of a uh, a topic discussion here for a Matt, Matty Morell. Uh, who was brought to us by the Standard Squeeze, this topic discussion for the week. Tell us a little bit about this one and a shout out to our good sponsors and friends at Standard Squeeze. Uh, Maddie, you've got Standard Squeeze hat on your head right now. I've got here right now as well. Maddie's proudly drinking from the Standard Squeeze. These guys have not only cups and hats and apparel, they've got camping gear, everything you need to have a good time. And if you use promo code INSIGHT15, you get 15% off your purchase. Maddie, what is your question? Mate, um, yeah, Morel's had a good one. Um, he just said with the trade deadline just a month away, is someone like Pascal Siakam, DeJounte Murray, or even a Kyle Kuzma good enough to turn a mid-tier team into a contender? And his question was sort of centered around the fact that one of the buyers rumored in discussion are Indiana for Siakam. Now, Indiana is sort of one of those mid-tier teams looking to make the next step. Uh, of course, we saw him make the IST. That sort of doesn't mean too much when you see the Lakers win the IST and they're about 10th or 11th in the West at the moment. Oh. But, um, yeah, look, one of the buyers in discussion for Indiana are Siakam. Uh, for DeJounte, it's like the Lakers and the 76ers. Do you think any of these guys that are up for trade are enough to turn a mid-tier team into a contender, Matty? Yeah, I do. And I actually, I will I will probably espouse the fact that for me that I actually don't, I think the Indiana Pacers are still being slept on. For the, us to call them a mid-tier team at this point of the season, I almost think it's putting a bit of disrespect on their name. I think the Pacers have been an absolutely class act. And that's that's really interesting to say as well. But because when you look at their record, they're 20 and 15. They're seventh in the Eastern Conference right now. But that's also a bit of fool's gold and illusory. Because if you look at the Eastern Conference, the teams that are on 20 wins are the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Orlando Magic, the Miami Heat. They're only one game behind the New York Knicks for fourth and only three games behind the Philadelphia 76ers for third. That That's a really competitive conference. And, I mean, the Chicago Bulls are at 16, and we all know how much they suck. Atlanta sitting at 14 and 20. I would, I would probably more be inclined to say that we would be seeing an Atlanta or a Toronto with whatever trade happens creep into the play-in tournament contention than anything else. And seeing Chicago drop out, to be fair. And yeah, so I that then comes back to the Nets in. drop out too, yeah. I can see, yeah, I can see the Nets drop out. So of those teams at 16 and 20, the Nets and the Nets are also considered to be buyers at the deadline. They'd really build around Mikhail Bridges. And I think Cam Thomas might get some action out there. I think they'll trade him out the door. Well, they could trade him out the door. Who knows? But 16 and 20 for Brooklyn and Chicago, I see them going. I see them fading. And I definitely see Atlanta and Toronto making a move no matter what they do. But that leads me back to the path to Indiana. Pascal Siakam on Indiana. This is already a team that I feel has got the depth. They have put it together. They did make the final of the IST. They have impressed us. They're led by Tyrese Halliburton, who is not afraid of the big moment. You put Pascal Siakam on that team as a stretch four. He's better than Jalen Smith. And you look at the depth on that bench. Yeah, that's that's a deep team. So I could definitely see them moving into content, like deep contention in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, and it's a couple of the guys that they've got that are just winners. Bruce Brown yeah. is a winner. Buddy Hill, yeah. look, he probably hasn't had that much success, but at least during the regular season, he's a winner. He's a good guy that can win you games. Um, TJ McConnell just comes And he's a trade asset too, Matty. Matty, he's a trade asset too for win. these guys. Buddy Hill could be out the door. They can get a I really nice that, piece back for Buddy. Yeah, but they're going to send Buddy Heald out to, like, what, Toronto? Like, Toronto's looking maybe to get a bit worse. They only want picks and stuff for this. Toronto are looking at where they are in the ladder, which is 12th, and just thinking, fuck it, not this year. Yeah, do you think they could drop that much, though? They've got, like, if these other teams, it's going to be given fro for who wants to slip. Because, as you said, if the Nets and the Bulls both go down, 
it's two games between them. It starts to be a very fine line between who makes the playing tournament and who doesn't because there's no way any of them are dropping back to the likes of the Charlotte Hornets and the Washington Wizards on eight and six. And I don't think anyone in the NBA is destined to keep up with the Detroit Pistons this season on three wins, apart from San Antonio, now that Victor Manyama might not play much down the stretch. But now I think th that comes back to the question. I do think it does move the dial on Indiana. And I, I think we, when we see them at seventh right now, you see them, oh, they're seventh in the Eastern Conference. Like, they're literally three games away from being third. Like, that's how tight that is. So, yeah, I, I do think but it moves I the think dial. Ceil I think their ceiling is fourth or fifth. Like, they're seventh and their ceiling is fourth or fifth, even with Pascal. I don't, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think they're better than the Heat. Mm, I think they're better than the Heat. I think they're better than really the Heat. There. No, I'm trying to think. I, I, look, I, I think they could. I, the way the Heat play, I do look confused because I'm trying to think about. It. I think they would. I think them and the Heat play really fast and good brand of basketball when Jimmy Butler's not out there or when Jimmy Butler's healthy. I think that's the biggest thing right now. I'm looking at them without Butler because he hasn't been there. They also haven't had. They only had Tyler Hero back for a very short time. I actually like New York. I, I like what OG does, but I actually think. I think. Pound for pound, the pace is probably they're equal or better. I don't think – I think they might be better than Philly. I don't think there's a better player involved apart from Tyrese and Joel Embiid. But I don't know. I think they could give Philly a run for their money, the way that they they go for it. I, I just – I like the paces and I like their brand of basketball. I think Rick Carlisle's got a lot of talent there, and I think they're deep. I think they're deep. And – I don't know, man. I see them top four, but I definitely see. Look, how's this? Let's call them a top four, top five team. But I think they could disrupt someone in the East. Definitely, they could put some games on a contender and some close ones. And that's what it's probably yeah, about. I don't putting think, their name out there. I, I don't think it makes any of these guys a contender, though. Like it makes them yeah. better. So we're moving it from seventh better. to fifth. Like they're yeah. moving from seventh to fifth. And I don't know. Like if you have a look at some of those Western Conference teams, like. You know, the Mavericks and the Kings are fifth and sixth and the Pels are seventh. Like maybe I'm not sure that the Pels get any better there and you're looking at the Suns, Warriors and Lakers trying to move up there a little bit. Like That's... I don't think it makes any of those guys much better. Here's a big question then. Here's a bit of a hot take for you. Do you think the Lakers make the playoffs with their move? Because if we're, this, is the, this is the thing you have to talk about. If you're saying that DeJounte Murray can end up being a Laker, Here's your hot take. Currently, the Lakers, after their loss here, that they have slipped now outside of the top 10. They're now at 11th. They have been on a losing streak. They've lost their last four. They're 17 and 19. To climb back up to even being a 21 and 15 team, which is your cusp there of the, like the, from then again, 21 and 15 is from fifth place down to seventh place. If the yep. Lakers skid and Utah keeps on doing what they're doing, let's say, Golden State gets better. Do the Lakers, but if this is a question you've got to ask yourself, does this trade to get to John Murray move the Lakers to a championship contender? Because it's by virtue the same thing going from 11th to fourth, but then they did trades last year and they ended up in the Western Conference finals. Like that means contender. I mean, it gives them a better chance of making the playoffs. Right now, they're not even in, in the mix. So, my question for you, you said topic wise, who would be your? Who would you think are the number one? Like, who is the number one team in 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 basketball for you right now? Who do you not seeing being beaten? And you're allowed. And I'm and I'll say number one team, but I'm going to give you three teams. Like, who would be the top tier for you? Denver Celtics Bucks. Still the Bucks. Still the Bucks. Yeah, I think the Bucks. It's the Bucks or the 76ers, and it is still the Bucks for me. I, I don't think we've seen the best out of the Bucks this season. I don't think we've seen that. And we've seen a, a Dame Which, who hasn't been – Yeah, we should scare you. We, we haven't – right? We haven't seen, we haven't seen a scary Bucks, Dame yet. Second. They're second. We haven't seen a scary good Dame yet. If that switch flips, like, like we were all talking about that pick and roll game with, with – Giannis before the season started, and we haven't seen that yet. Apparently, it took time. It's going to take time to coalesce. Giannis hasn't had a ball operator much like Dame before to get used to it. My God, that that's a scary combination if that gets figured out. 
and we all know that that's what this is about. It's about 82 games of, of playing basketball and putting it together to play your best basketball come the finals. Look, I'm there with you on Boston and Milwaukee. I, I actually do see – I like Minnesota, man. I, they're playing real good. I, I, and I hate – and I and look, I love Denver. I think Denver is a brilliant team. I love OKC. I love watching OKC play basketball. Like they're probably more preferred teams. But I can't disparage how good it's been – to watch the Minnesota Timberwolves figure it out and play really good basketball. I love Mike Conley. I like Ann Edwards most of the time. I think Carl Anthony Towns is a tool. I don't even know what to feel about Rudy Gobert, but I like what they're doing. I, I see them. Like I, I don't want to. Yeah. I just like don't see Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns putting it together for 16 games in a in a in a playoff run. I see Mike Conley doing Mike Conley things and lifting up all his teammates around him. I haven't really seen yeah. that from Rudy Gobert over his career. Maybe it's a language barrier. I'm not sure. Uh, but <laughs> I'm pretty um, sure he speaks English pretty fluently by now. I'm just I would yeah. be of the or people would have learned to speak French around him enough by now. Surely. We oui, I get surely. It. Um <laughs> But, yeah, look, I just, like, when there's teams like the Nuggets, I think I would even prefer the Clippers or someone like that over the Timberwolves and the Thunder in a um, in a seven-game series. So I would, yeah, I would love to see, I think Denver versus OKC, this passing of this new, like, super team. I'm not the super team, but I like, like, I think people are talking, like, what is the potential for future Denver Nuggets championships here? And they've got a great team around them. Like, that's a really good team but that's a like, like that's a really good team of basketball players like putting together a really good run right now they're 25 and 12 they're they're good and Jokic's ability to hit those game winners and those moon shots is just ridiculous like that 40 footer the other day was absolutely nuts I think for me when I'm looking at their their upside they've got the chance to win it again but I actually think they're going to be more challenged this year so I think it's going to be a to get this back to back if they do win it I think it's going to be a harder path for them this year than it was last year. Just how I feel about the Timberwolves and the Thunder is I see them getting bounced in the first round by somebody like the Lakers or the Grizzlies, just like oh. just making it or the Suns. Like, you know what I mean? Like, tell me the Suns, the, the Lakers or the Grizzlies. Well, I don't think the Clippers will be playing them. Cause I think, like not in the first round because I think the Clippers are better than that. I just see like the like the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Grizzlies. They've dug themselves these holes, but yeah, I can see them getting out of the first round if you had to play them. It was like when the Grizzlies had to play the Lakers last year. You know, yeah. uh, an inexperienced team playing an experienced team, and I think the Timberwolves and the Thunder will be better for it. But I can see yeah. them making the playoffs, being these one, two, three seeds wherever they are, and getting bounced by a more experienced team in like even the Mavericks, the Mavs, the Warriors, the Lakers, the Grizzlies, if they can start I see, putting a run together. Yeah. I see right now if that top eight was to shake out how it is. I see the, I see the Clippers being real scary. I, I see the Clippers being real scary with how many veterans are on that team. And I know that's not like fantasy wise right now. We're talking about upside. We want to talk about upside for the year. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and James Harden. This was these guys are they are indeed nice. And I can tell you off the top of my head right now, every single one of us is kicking ourselves in every single league that we didn't take these guys when we saw them sitting there in the third round. When those when those guys were sitting there, I know that I grabbed Kawhi in a league in the beginning of the fourth. And I was like, surely not, surely not. And he was coming back to me because I regretted not taking him on the turn back in the third. I was like, this is my time to take Kawhi. He's a top 10 player when he's healthy. Like someone's going to be smart enough to take him. But these discounts we take on players because of their injury history or their, you know, ego attitude problem or how many shoes they're selling in China or their deal with Daryl Morey or whatever it is, mate, the discounts that, that people got on, the, that wins leagues. Derek White is the guy that kind of sleeper from this season that you couldn't have predicted because the Drew Holiday trade, we thought his destiny was not to be a top 25 NBA player this season. But you could almost yep. argue that Derek White has been the best Celtic, maybe? No. Oh, no, but he's been good. Like his rankings right now are right up there with what is he compared to in nine cat leagues? How's this? Jason Tatum. Look, Jason Tatum might will probably just be ahead of him. 
but I'm going to say that he's not too far. No, Derek White is actually ranked at the 17th best player right now in Basketball Monster to compared to Jason Tatum at 24 as of today. So, I mean, that could change. So, fantasy purposes, I know some sites have got him higher, but Derek White has been a machine, and those blocks out of position have just been bloody awesome. But like you said, man, it win- things like this win leagues. So, there's a lot of scary teams to it. Should we get to uh, – we talked about it. That's tough enough. Should we – oh, go on. I was just saying, like, the like you say it wins leagues. I went on a yeah. fantastic yeah. run one, one year, and it was because I was watching the first game of the Grizzlies – when there's a 14 game slate and nobody watched the Grizzlies, and I picked up this little draft pick that they had called Desmond oh, Bain, and I Bain. added him. And, um, like, I'm in leagues that go 200 players deep, and he was not drafted. So, like, I yeah. just went and added him in every league and, like, absolutely tore it up. It's just like, you know, maybe, uh, you may yuck as juniors and like those kind of guys. Those are the guys I feel wins your leagues. Like even when you talk about your Nikola Jokic and your Joel Embiid, like how good's Joel Embiid been? Fantastically. Been you great. probably took him, you've probably taken him with the second draft pick. So you've got Mate, he's draft slid. Value, and, and this is, so. and this is the thing he's and the top five of fantasy drafts now is so stacked. Like we're looking hmm. at really good players and really good options. Like, the league itself is in a really good place, man. But I just think fantasy basketball wise, because of the quality of play we're getting in the NBA right now, quality of fantasy basketball is getting tougher. And I think competition is getting tougher in leagues because of it. And that's healthy. Like that's really good for you as a manager. Like it's going to piss you off, but bloody hell, it's good. I'd always felt I was a chance of winning with the 10th to 12th pick in 12 team leagues. But yeah. honestly, like who do I take? Like, Lamelo Ball and uh, no. Trey Young, yeah. like I'm, I'm nowhere near like the heights of an SGA or a Tyrese Halliburton or um, yeah, like Anthony Davis didn't slide that bad. Like we were at a big disadvantage being at the end of, at the end of drafts yeah. this year. And you took, and you got the first pick in a lot of drafts, you bastard. Can I just say every two. single time that I saw two, yeah, of, of the, of the yeah. But, two, but two that I'm in. So every single time that I saw your name, I'm one. I'm like, did you get the right Matthew? Can I just, can I just <laughs> clarify that it's, it's not the right one? I'm like, are you? Can we just double check the spelling of O'Brien, please? Is it not spelled G A double R? Just, just, I'm asking for a friend of mine. Let's go around the league a little bit of a look at the uh, the injury updates around the place. <laughs> Uh, may not be broken, but DeAndre Hunter could possibly be traded. So there's probably a bit of an ego that is out. He's expected to be back sometime this week for Atlanta. In Boston, Kristaps Porzingis was poked in the eye, and it wasn't deliberately, we think, but they have a rematch up this week in uh, against the Indiana Pacers. So he should be returning. He is a game-time decision. The Brooklyn Nets... Ben Simmons is too busy cooking 4 and 20 pies to return to the NBA action right now. And we fully support that here at the Inside Podcast Network. We are all for a traveler, which is what he put in, by the way. Americans listening. That is called a traveler pie. We do those because we eat them in our motor vehicles, which is what we call cars here in Australia. Most likely a ute, which is another car that we cannot, we call a pickup. Um, and we eat them like that. So he'll be back eventually. And not, this was not a, guy a big Maddie. traveler fan, actually. I'm not a big traveler fan. I don't like them. I'm just a sausage I'm a roll guy. If I'm getting a traveler, why am I not getting a no. sausage roll? No, I'm a pie and peas guy. Okay. You know, like you go to you no, go to that's... those old country bakeries and they just start oh slamming God. the salty peas on the top of your steak and mushroom pie. Under the lid, though, don't put it on top yeah, of the I'm lid. Not... I want to take Screw the lid under. off. And we're talking about the top of the pie. I want to take that off, have a little nibble of that. No, I don't even need sauce. I don't need sauce with my yeah. pie. Not I, pie and peas, always... steak and mushroom. No, I, I always cut the lid off my pie and I'll eat almost my pie as a delicious pastry separately. It is the way you need to do it. And I think we're going back to one of our very first conversations like three, four years ago, deep in COVID times we met on Plan 2K. This, was a, this is a deep cut here in Australia. Big Dad's Pies for anyone in Queensland. Big Dad's Pies was a little Toowoomba company that could. And there was this literally the guy called Big Dad and he made these meat pies. He was a baker. And someone decided to franchise these bad boys out across the place. And they used to even put a, uh, they had a pastry. They made meat pies, big dads. Mate, absolutely love them. Pie and peas, mushy peas. It's mushy peas. Got My wife hates mushy peas. It doesn't do the end of it. Anyway, uh, I would love that one. But, 
No, absolutely. She's a queen and I love her for it. Uh, she's expected if he's, he's not going to come back this week. And it's a one-game week as well. So, look, we don't know what's happening with Ben Simmons. He probably might travel with the team because he likes Paris this time of year. And then again, who doesn't? Big news, though. LaMelo Ball is a possible game-time decision to return in the coming days. People are happy about that one. PJ Washington, game-time decision. Uh, not this week. Expect him back in week 13, Gordon Hayward. But questionable game time decision for Mark Williams. We can't trust that because he'll be probably moved to doubtful again and out as he has pretty much every game. That is a fantasy manager's worst nightmare. Uh, what's going on in Chicago, Matty? Um, look, uh, Caruso and Patty Williams are game time decisions. Patty Williams has been on and off the uh, the waiver wire this year. Um, look, sometimes he's good, sometimes he's a bit ordinary, but yeah, that's what you get in the waiver wire. Um, Tory Craig's out again for at least another month and a half. Um, in Cleveland, you've got Garland out until at least another five days. We're going to have a look at his jaw. Um, they said three or four weeks. I expect we'll just get an update and I probably expect another 10 days out from Darius Garland and another month at least from Evan Mobley. Um, in Dallas, um, you've I'm got fine. Dante Exum. He is getting close to a return. Um, you've got Maxi Kleber, but I'm not sure if he works his way back into the rotation uh, back in a bit over a week. Um, we've got Holmes, Lively, Luca, Markeith Morris, and Grant Williams, all game time decisions. And they'll actually shape the um, the Dallas Mavericks out because they're all rotation players. Um Nothing going on in Denver, Detroit. Um, Isaiah Stewart is on his way back. Um, Alec Burks, um, you know, hit a game winner in, i tell you what, a franchise game for, for Detroit coming off that 22-game losing streak. Who would have I, – I still stand by that Alec Burks would be a good player if he was on a good team. Like, he would be spoken about. Like, if he was – Hold up, hold up. We, we said contender. that when he was a Golden – he was a Golden State Warrior and he got He was good as a Warriors. Wasn't. He was, he was and this is the thing. But then they moved him off. So why would a good – this is the thing that always gets me when we say this about these guys is this is a guy who we loved. Alec Burks is a perfect – like, he could be a great Laker. You know, one of these teams that are sucking at the trade deadline and needs to it needs to get jump on there, just needs a bit of offense who can create their own. You know, this is the kind of guy that should be there who can hit a three-point shot, but then he gets to those teams and now he's stuck as a Detroit Piston, which is sad. Mm. It's sad. Mm. Yeah, he's getting paid, like, 16 million or something. I'm not sad. I'm not actually worried for him. Um, I'm the worst. <laughs> um, the Warriors, um, we've got CP3 out with that uh, broken hand out until at least the 10th of February, and hence all the trade rumors. Sort of hasn't worked out for CP3 there in Golden State. And um, yeah, head us into Houston, man. Yeah, man, game time decision um, coming up until, look, I think Tara Easton is at the next one. And so with Dylan Brooks, so we can expect them back maybe later in the week. So stay tuned for those updates if you have them stashed, or especially if Tara Eason has been dropped in your league. Tara Eason has got a steal in each one of his last, no, I think, 10 games. But he's had two in at least nine of those games as well, which is the thing we, everyone talks about, the, oh, he's on a steal streak. It's the volume that he's getting them in, which we like to. Bruce Brown is expected at back, and so is Andrew Nemhard. And when we talked about depth of the Indiana Pacers, these guys watch the rotation minutes there for the Indiana Pacers this week. Because when they return, where do we see it go? Jalen Smith came out of nowhere to play the starting power forward minutes alongside the front court of Miles Turner. And that's working out pretty, pretty okay right now for the Pacers, to be fair. But this was Obi Toppin's spot. And then we had Benedict Mathurin as a shooting guard. And then we had Buddy Heald. And now these guys are back on the bench. They are a deep team at the Pacers. Stay tuned, especially with all the trade rumors there. The Lakers, Rui Hachimura is going to be returning later this week. D'Angelo Russell is a game-time decision. Anthony Davis is game to day to Davis as always, but he'll most likely play and continue rolling through the NBA. And we don't have to worry about Gabe Vincent for any point of fantasy purposes because he hasn't really played for them all year long and he could probably be moved by the deadline and just drop the contract at this point in time because that he's not coming back until at least February. Game time decision for Ja Morant, which is scary for me with his shoulder injury as I have him in the same team that I have a one game week from Donovan Mitchell, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson and Nick Claxton. So like I please said, come back and play Ja Morant. Please come back and play. I'm taking the week off that league. It's, it's a week off in that league. Uh, I head us down to the warm tropical climbs of Miami, Maddie. Uh, you've got um, 
Haywood Highsmith um, out with a concussion. Uh, Caleb Martin is a game time decision. Jimmy Butler is a game time decision. Um, in Milwaukee, we have uh, Jay Crowder out for another ten days. Um, in Minnesota, there's no notable injuries. And in New Orleans, uh, we've got Zion, a game-time decision. A lot of these other ones, I take game-time decisions with a grain of salt. But Zion tends yeah. to, when he has a game-time decision, he doesn't always play. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit worried about that as an owner of Zion in a couple of leagues. Um, Jose Alvarado, not really fantasy relevant, out for another three or four days. Um, in New York, uh, Mitch Robinson, we won't see him again. And Take us into Orlando's mouthful. Now, can I just say that when that dropped earlier this week, we were a little bit curious when he was coming back. If it was going to be later in the season, and then all of a sudden it wasn't at all. And Isaiah Hartenstein was still sitting on a lot of people's wires. He has been absolutely brilliant in Mitch Robinson's stead. I almost picked him up. I actually was going to drop. I should have probably done it in a league, but I've got Walker Kessler and I've just liked the volume that Walker Kessler's got because it's a one center league. You don't need to really spurs it. And you end up finding yourself when you've got Nick Claxton as your other center, who would I really be better going Claxton or, or Isaiah Hartenstein? Well, look, I like Claxton and that's my preference on that one. Orlando magic. We've all heard about the Reddit meme where about if Detroit decided to kill five of their players, they could trigger the redraft clause. Well, I feel like that could possibly be what happens at 10 injuries that wipe out your team for the Orlando Magic. Let's just say the whole team is game-time decision because you've got Martel Fultz who's a game-time decision, Wendell Carter Jr., Gogo Badadze, and Anthony Black. You've also got, with his hamstring injury, Jonathan Isaac out, returning possibly this week, ankle, uh, ankle sprain to Franz Wagner. He's going to be out for the first game of the week, returning about midweek, hopefully. They've got a back-to-back set coming up, so you probably think that he'd play in the second to give some more healing time. Gary House, Gary, no, Gary House, Gary bloody Harris, Harris. nice one, Gary House, Gary Harris, he's going to be probably back in the same situation, and Joe Ingles is the same as well. So pretty much the entire Orlando Magic team has got some form of illness, ankle, or sprain going on, which is almost the same for Philadelphia. you got Robert Covington, Anthony Melton, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid, or possibly returning for their next game. Again, they've only got two games this week, so you could probably expect them to sit one and play one. And Furkan Kormas is in the same situation. He's a little bit of a sick boy. Phoenix Suns, Matty. Yeah, we've got um, Kevin Durant's a game-time decision. Um, I'm not too worried about Damian Lee. Eric Gordon's a game-time decision. Um, and Nasir Little is a game-time decision as well um, in Portland. Um, just waiting for an update there on DeAndre Ayton. Uh, Matisse Thibel, Matty Thibel, uh, is a question mark there as well. Uh, we have Trey Lyles, um, a game time decision in Sacramento. And Sandy, uh, San Antonio are playing a few Ducks and Drakes, I feel. Um, Malachi Branham is a game time decision. Jeremy Sohan is a game time decision. Keldon Johnson is a game time decision. And all these game time decisions do seem to be rotating amongst their players, I've noticed. Um, yeah, they Zach do. Collins is out for another week. Um, I believe him to be actually injured. Um, but yeah, uh, take us, take us up we, north into we, Toronto. Well, I'll, I'll take you north after I take you back down to San Antonio, Mexico, what, near Mexico way, uh, down by the Alamo for a second, mate. Victor Wembanyama, the news broke this week that he is not going to be possibly playing in the back-to-back -back games anymore. So he's probably out of those. He is no longer going to be playing 24 more than 24 minutes of night unless it is required, which it was the other night as well. So he did roll out there for a few more minutes. So this is the rookie of the year. This is the generational talent whose numbers are just on the chart per 36 are just bonkers ridiculous. But the best case scenario for him is that yeah he, he gives you his best he's gonna he's not gonna play both ends of the back-to-back -back set and i think that's been probably one of the biggest bugbears of people with victor Wembanyama. and you might see i present for you the buy low case for victor Wembanyama. if you are a good caliber team and your manager knows this there is a chance that you might be able to slide in and the numbers that he's going to get you on these low think about this like the Kawhi Leonard last year who didn't play back-to-backs but when he comes out there in his per 24 minutes, he's going to go crazy in 24 minutes. We saw it the other night against the Bucks, what he could do, and he could push to 26 games. Now, they're not going to go close some games because obviously they're tanking. But with the amount of back-to-backs that they have and what he can do in 24 minutes, I think it's a bit of a buyer low window, not like a bargain basement by any chance, Matty, but 
a manager who's read that news this week and then he might not give them all availability for San Antonio, I think there's a chance that people could sneak in there. It could also be a sell high. Um, and Ooh. like mm. playing devil's advocate, like if yeah, you aren't that into the NBA and you're just into doing fantasy comps, you hear everybody talk about how good Victor Wembanyama has been all year. You mm. press your little Yahoo button in the corner and you see the 27th ranked player and somebody's looking to get rid of Victor Wembanyama. Um, I, it is actually still a sell high, I think, because I think in 24 yep. minutes, he can't get any better than the 27th ranked player. If you can get yep. another top 30 player, and I would say that anybody has more upside than Victor Wembanyama as the 27th ranked player because they're going to be playing more than 24 minutes a night and going to be playing back to backs. Yeah, I reckon in I reckon in young leagues, I reckon I reckon in leagues who people know what they're doing, they're going to probably be a little bit hesitant to sell high. I think it depends on what kind of league you're in. I think you hit the nail on the head because yep. if you can sell off that name. If you're in a league and you're like a smarter player in that league and there's a bunch of guys who just know the name of Victor Wembanyama, you could really get a nice piece back for that. Like you could definitely sell high. I think in deeper leagues or in competitive like leagues like ours where we've got like only a 10-man bench, I think that's where the possible buy a low option is because those guys are kind of well aware of what's going on in the minutes restrictions and things like that. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's yeah, choose your league. And again, it goes back to the whole thing of like no your enemy on that one, or or just know your best mates and know if you want to take their money or not. Yeah, Toronto, uh, Gary Trent is a game time decision there. And the Washington Wizards Tarandis out there. Landry Shamet is uh, a game time decision, but he's still shit and we don't like the bloke. And he's probably gonna come back in whatever and barely play for them because Corey Kispert has pretty much taken on those minutes. And Danny Advier has been a revelation. This season, I know Mick Dell in that pod that we did today, Maddie. The uh, it'll be our hundred, you know, it'll be our hundred and twentieth episode when it drops. This is our hundred and twentieth. Well, there you go. There you it's go. To, that's going to be the hundred twentieth when I did the slate today. This is hundred and nineteen episodes we've done of NBA content, and this halftime report is coming up. It'll be the hundred twentieth episode for the Inside Podcast Network. Make sure you get on our Discord. Make sure you get all in our channels. Like everything. Maddie, big week in store. I'm going to take the week off in one league. Don't don't even bother about checking on me in the inside B league. Don't even do that. I'm I'm not going to be. Around. I won't be. I just I just sent you a trade, Victor Wembanyama for Jason Tatum. So uh, you can you can pop into that one for uh, for one. Did you do that? You did too. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, there's no chance. Reject. You did. I'm actually going to say you actually did slide. You slid. You slid into my bloody. You slid in. No, because is that why you were trying to sell high? Like if you were just trying to convince me the opposite. I'm just, no, I'm just going to find somebody else to sell it to. But I just thought I'd, uh, I'd. Uh, you said that if I find an inexperienced player that doesn't know what they're doing, so I thought I'd trade with you. So, <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, no, I've never, I've never played fantasy. Well, oh, I've heard this Victor bloke from is he, is he, is he's, he's from France. Yeah, he's very good at the game of basketball. We, oui. we, oui, yes. No, no. Look, I, I'm, I have a spouse. This is the one I'm writing on dying because I've wanted Jason Tatum in, in some leagues. We have a mate of ours, and I won't say much about it, but I was going to do a trade in one of our many leagues for Jason Tatum just because I've tried to get him because I liked him this year, and I think that he'll get better towards the tail end after the All-Star break. I think he'll only continue to go up. So I wanted to trade for him, and then we were like, oh, we're not going to trade around. And I was like, damn it. Just gonna get more Tatum action in my life, and I was like pissed off. No, I will. I will. Do you want to cancel it? Do I have to push the reject button live? No, nah, press, gonna press reject. Reject. I can't. I'll, I can't. I've got. I've got too many bloody power forwards and centers in that league. Anyway, would you like someone else for him? No, no. You told me only an idiot would accept it, so that's okay. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I said. I said. I would. I would still like Victor Wembanyama because he's got power forward eligibility, and that that would get me my extra blocks in this league. And he doesn't play back to backs, Matty. Look, find a, find a good person, find someone to sell it to. Not one of your mates on this one, and have an absolute cracker. Mate, thanks so much for listening. Like and subscribe to all the things. We'll catch you for the crossover next week. Oh, actually, you know what, Matty? I did put together a list of things. I didn't. I was going to ask ask you: Is there any guys who jump off the page for you that you'd like to add this week? I put together a list of names of dudes who I'm going to look to target in and out of the week. Is there anyone that just jumps off the page for you that you're looking for by any chance this week? When I looked, it was Suggs and maybe a 
I actually see one of these weeks as one of the ones, and I think of the word antipod. So pod is a point of difference, an antipod, and these guys from Brooklyn that maybe in some deeper formats they see that one guy's playing. So maybe they drop a Spencer Dinwiddie. Um, maybe yeah. you just pick him up because you're going to have full weeks a lot. Yeah, and, and, and Dayron and, week. and Dayron Sharp is playing good backup minutes over there. So you want to look at a Dayron Sharp, especially in this kind of rotation where, you know, they're going to roll like Claxton true. versus Allen to start off. You know, there's some value there in those guys. It's for a game as well. And you can get it in on that day through the course of the week, to be fair. Um, I pulled out these guys because I'm really interested with the Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody situation in Golden State. I think Kaminga is probably the better ad because I just think he's the guy Draymond comes back. There's still a lot going on with injuries. I think Pod is still about. And I just think there's a case because Kaminga's not rostered in as many le- in leagues. Um, I know it's not sexy, but with, you know, Eric Gordon being possibility and Eric and heaven match we're seeing of Kevin Durant after he's missing games. I definitely think Grayson Allen is one to keep our eye on. Yeah, and I definitely the 63rd think third ranked player this year. Grayson Allen yeah, he's is, been according to Yahoo, the 63rd ranked player. That's wild. Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely wild. And he's had some moments. So look, I think there's value in him this week. Also, Dante DiVincenzo, I swooped him. Actually, we got the I've got the can you got the sound drop there for Hawk for uh I, I think I should definitely do this one as a bit of a shout out, Deep Cut. Here we go. This one. That was me when I saw Dante DiVincenzo hanging around in so many leagues. Uh, he has still not been added. He has proven to be absolutely useful in teams. 44% rostered the last time I looked uh, in Yahoo. I think that has crept up as well. So do you, can you check ESPN if there's any way of that one? Because I actually think that Dante DiVincenzo is Dante DiVincenzo has crept up DiVin. Come on. There we go. There you they, are, Dante. They only update once a week, so. Oh, that's right. They do too. Uh, yeah, he's oh Jesus, Mother Mary. He has jumped up again since I've looked because now he is up to 50% rostered. In the past 24 hours, he has gone up 28%. I think he is the main beneficiary from that New York Knicks roster in this trade because Josh Hart is still getting minutes, but again, he has been inconsistent all year. We know he gets us out of position, rebounds. We, we really truly do love that for him, but I think that uh yeah, I think that it's time to get Dante Vincenzo into some lineups. And those are pretty much the main guys that I thought. I think, you know, you might have a crack at and try and bring into your teams if you get half a chance, Matty. Uh, maybe Nick Richards as well, if he's still around, because we don't know what's going on with Mark Williams. I think that's the other one with a four-game week for Charlotte. Yep, I agree with you. Perfect, mate. Well, then I think we're done here. Let's wrap it up. Mate, take care, everyone. Be well. We'll catch you again soon. Maddie's back on the show tomorrow night. We've got a special 120 episode. We call it the Half Time Report with Mikdell Dropper. Make sure you like and subscribe. Get your notifications switched on with all the bell for all things inside NBA. We've got AFL pods dropping. We've got NRL pods dropping, Maddie. That's fun. Whisper is part of the team now. That's been huge. We've got so much content. BBL action coming out. NBL. You're catching up with Hammer this week on those ones. If you love your sport, Love your Insight Podcast Network. We'll see you soon, kids.